I guess we'll get started. Mr. Peterson, what is next on our agenda, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Resulting case is Z113, Habitat for Humanity of Northwest Metro Atlanta Incorporated. Request rezoning from R20 to RA5 for the purpose of a residential subdivision in land lots 494 and 495 of the 18th district. The property is located on the southwest side of Hillcrest Drive at Burnby Cove Drive and on the east and south sides of Ridgefield Drive. Is the applicant present? Let's record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z113? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Would the applicant please come forward to be sworn in? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm David McGinnis. I'm the president and executive director for Habitat for Humanity located here in Cobb County. Uh, we have before you a request today of approximately eight acres. Our desire is to zone it an RA5, uh, as you've seen, and, and incorporate in that uh, 25 residential building lots. Uh, we have met with the staff and incorporated their recommendations and suggestions into the plans that you currently have. I will tell you, we sent out the uh, respective number of letters to the uh, corresponding property owners around us. I have received four contacts. The first one was someone who wanting to sell their land on Hillcrest Road to me. Um, the other two were neighbors in Wilhelmina Drive who have sent uh, a letter that basically duplicates each other, and they express some interest that each of you, I think you already have. Uh, the other, only other contact I had was late Friday afternoon with a gentleman calling me <clears throat> to speak to those points. And if you will allow me, I will speak to the respective points in the letter. In regards to the schools and the highways, let me remind you, if you're not aware, that the majority of the families we minister to are not moving into Cobb County. The majority of the families we minister to already live in South Cobb. We are providing them an opportunity to move out of the rental capacity into a homeowner's position. So the likelihood of us increasing with this subdivision, uh, more students in schools or more uh, cars on the highways is minute in that they're already there. Uh, the idea of uh, playing area, playing surface, in our subdivision we will have a green space that's provided. And when I grew up, we played in our backyards. I'm not so certain that isn't still a good idea. Um, as terms of the other items, I will, I'll jip, skip over one or two and speak to them last, if I may. There's always the question of, we like what you do, but don't do it in my backyard. And I'm sorry that people have that attitude, but we deal with where we can afford the property. The organization has owned the back piece on Ridgefield for a number of years. I'm completing my third year in the organization, so it was there when I arrived. And the lady on the front, the, the small three-acre piece that we purchased that fronts on Hillcrest, gives now the opportunity for us to put the two parcels together and provide the subdivision. So in terms of the development, too many houses, I respectfully request that we... Uh, be granted the RA-5, which is inconsistent with the subdivisions in and around the community. The resale value of our homes, typically our houses come in in the one hundred and thirty dollars and $140,000 range, which I believe currently would be commensurate with what's there. The other points that, uh, that was spoken to in the letter addresses the fact that the people that we work with um, work and earn somewhere in the 30 uh, to 80 percent of the average income. And while I greatly understand the concern, that should not be a concern of our organization when we look to sell a piece of property. We do not give the property to these homeowners. We sell it to them. Granted, there is no interest in the loan, but they pay. And who are these people? These are rank and file of America. They are not the chief executive officers. They're not the ones sitting up on the platform. These are the ones that work in the mainstream, in the hospitals, in the other organizations. They're needing a hand up, not a hand out. I will tell you, out of the mortgages that we carry, some 300, 
which equates to a sizable investment that we have. I carry less than 0.6% in past dues. These are hardworking individual families. We represent nine countries along with our country in the subdivisions that we have in Cobb County. So yes, they may not be the ones that can, can live in the East Cobb area. I can't afford to live in the East Cobb area. I live in South Cobb. But this is a subdivision that we believe fits the community. I will not address the fact that the last gentleman that called me had a great concern that we had too many habitat houses in this community. And, and I ask that you not consider that because where do we draw the line? Where do we decide we have too many of this type house, too many of that type house, too many of this individual and too many of that individual? We should look at the request for the characteristics and criteria of its own standing. And so I come to you asking you to consider, and I'll be glad to answer any questions I can, on the request for us to provide the 25 homes. We will build the uh, slab on grade homes. They will average 1,600 square feet in there. Uh, the concern that uh, the individual mentioned to us was the parking. If you have been on Lee Road, we have just completed um, eight houses down there, and we expanded the parking facilities from the two-car to a turnaround, which will accommodate four cars per each home. And we are certainly wanting to do one of three things. We want to provide a home. We want to improve the community, but we also want to provide hope to those that we minister to. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, David. Yes. Um, anyone here wish to speak to C-113 opposition? Come on up now. <clears throat> have you been sworn in, ma'am? Yes. Okay, come on up. Just give us your name. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Delancey. I'm a resident on Incorporated um, Austell, have been for the past nine years. And actually, I am speaking of support um, for the Habitat Humanity community. Um, let me just speak first to what I've been able to research and observe for me being in the area for nine years. Pilbrook High School is the main high school for that area. And Pilbrook High School have approximately 24 transit communities that feed the public high school. That's including apartment complexes, trailer parks, townhome communities, and also rental property that's in the subdivisions, okay? Public high school have a transit rate of 40%. The students that attend public high school reside in communities such as apartment communities with rents averaging between, for a two-bedroom, $500 to $800 a month, which is compatible to what a Habitat for Humanity home would be if, you're, if you own a home. As we talk about revitalization in the area, we have to stabilize the community. We can't have that many transit communities in that area. So that viable option will be a Habitat for Humanity um, home. Families have to renew their lease every year that reside in apartment com um, communities. So every year, if there's something going on in your apartment complex, you're afraid to speak out because you run the risk of not having your lease renewed. So how are we going to stabilize a community if you have to move every two or three years because you made a complaint about the apartment complex? What the Pebblebrook community needs is access to opportunities for home ownership. I agree that there must be a balance as it pertains to redevelopment in older communities. And, but we must be able to include everyone in the process. A Habitat for Humanity home uh, and a person that qualifies for a, 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 a home would play a mortgage for a home of three bedrooms, which would equal to be about what a two bedroom rental um, apartment would be. So I stress that we must be able to support the Habitat for Humanity model because this would benefit the community and empower and strengthen families. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Anyone else wishing to speak to Z113? Okay, not seeing any. It's back to this board. Mr. Porter, this is yours, I believe. Okay, thank you. In, in analyzing this, you know, we all certainly know who Habitat for Humanity is, and I think we all 
view view it as a great uh, charity and a great mission that they do. Uh, but in zoning, we really need to look at we're zoning the property, not the applicant. So, and and in this case, we just need to treat this like we would any other zoning, because essentially it is just another zoning. This is going to impact this property for the next 50 to 100 years, long after Habitat's no longer involved in it, and it's going to impact the entire community. So that's the way the way I'm approaching this, just like we would for anybody else. And, you know, the, the increase in density with the current R12 zoning, uh, staff estimates that there could be 12 homes built on this property and the request is for 25 homes <clears throat> so that's more than doubling the density of the property uh, and you know it's been standard in every zoning case we've had in many many years as long as I've been here and I'm sure as long as probably anybody else sitting up here has been here is that when we go up in density there has to be a benefit to the community to go up in density. And that means higher quality homes, larger homes typically, that in order to offset the other demands that are gonna be placed on all the infrastructure and everything else. Uh, so that's just some general comments. I did review the plan and for my review, it looked like 15 of the 25 lots would require a variance from the uh, RA5 code. And that's 60%. And when you talk about 60% variance, that's huge to me. And it's not, sometimes we do a variance where something offsets something, but that's not the case with these variances. The average lot size on here was just under 8,000 square feet. Uh, and I looked at, because we always are looking to see how how our property fits into the neighborhood to the immediate community there and if you look at the uh, contiguous r20 properties that are here they average 112,000 square feet so some 14 times larger so 8,000 isn't real compatible but i also went across the street and looked at the four properties that are directly across the street from this that are in the R15 OSC. And those ones average 12,933 square feet. Uh, so 8,000 square feet is considerably smaller you know, at, at that as well. Uh, something else that, that DOT brought up and, and I think would need to be addressed is uh, Ridgefield Drive right now is more or less a driveway than a road but uh also it doesn't align with the street across the brumley cove and that's something that would need to happen if you're going to put more homes in here because you're going to create you know traffic issues and potential for accidents in that if you have this offsetting intersection so that's something else uh the plan does have some houses that are less than 20 feet apart, and the uh, fire marshal requires a, a space of guest parking, not on not on somebody's property, but but off for every two homes that, that have less than 15 feet separation, uh, because it becomes a issue with people parking in the street, and then you can't get fire trucks and ambulances, things like that through. Uh, and I'm going to ask Dave Braden in a minute to come up, but there's some issues that that it appears like from reading the remarks, like there's probably some streams and some buffers that need to be in, and possibly three of the lots may not be developable because of the buffers that are required. And I think that's something that that we need a little bit more information on, and. Just in general on this, there was no buffering provided on the plan, uh, no uh, 
you know, screening for Hillcrest Drive to the backyards of the houses that were going to th go there, uh, things along that nature that are normally required when we're putting something more dense up against other properties. Uh, and also some side yard screening where it's at the corner and you're going to be seeing the backyard there as well. Uh, I will comment that the future land use map is medium density residential. So that would, you know, contemplate a higher density than our R20 being possible to develop this. Uh, but the RA5 plan we have in front of us just has too many variances. And I really think the look and feel of it's totally different than what's surrounding it. Uh, and that's why, you know, my, my thinking, I'm thinking R12, which is 12,000 square foot lots minimum, fits the look and feel and also fits the land use plan. And that may be something to, uh, to look at. Uh, with the house sizes, uh, average of 1,600, larger than what was really originally proposed. And I appreciate the applicant, you know, offering to go, to go larger. Uh, a lot of things that we tar normally get with, with these and what we've been pretty consistent with all our zonings for subdivisions that go up in density like that is 2,000 square feet and two car garages, 50% uh, brick or stacked stone on the, on the front elevation. And that. So that's a lot of it. I'd like to ask Dave Braden to come up for a minute. So I want to make sure we understand his comments regarding potential for a stream and and if that's something we should get defined Probably. right now because it affects the whole layout of the subdivision. Hey, again, Dave Bray with the Stormwater Management Division. Uh, my comments reflect the fact that uh, the stream that runs through the middle of the site uh, is identified on the county stream buffer map as having a 50-foot buffer. However, I will say that um, it doesn't extend much past the site, and those stream buffers have not been field verified. So there's a chance that it could be, it could not be considered a, a, a state water or a county buffer, but Frank Gibson would be the one to have to make that determination. I will say that the channel is very incised through the site, so I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't have a buffer on it. But <clears throat> again, I can't make that call. But if it does, then it does impact the site design pretty well because they can't, they currently have the detention pond shown within that draw just below the road and then another three lots are heavily impacted by that buffer so <clears throat> if it is if it is a buffer stream then obviously they're going to be three lots it'll probably wind up being one and then uh, detention pond will probably since the site is split kind of on both sides of the stream of the creek probably need to be a pond on each side so it will it will significantly impact the layout of the site so again it, it would um uh, if it gets approved to this plan or some reduced lot plan, then it probably will be need to be revised at some point during plan review. But it might be a good idea to go ahead and maybe get that answer question answered before, at least before the BOC hearing, or if you hold it now, get it answered before the next next hearing. So. Okay, because in that, and would they hire an independent engineer to go out there and do that, or is that something uh, they, that, that they can hire a, 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 a stream specialist to do that? But yeah. Frank would be willing to go out there and make that okay. determination for them. So. Okay. Yeah. So we could, they could work with Frank with and, county staff, Frank. And, and get that taken care of because that seems very important to this plan because if we're zoning to a plan, and there's a good chance that the detention's got to be totally different. The, yeah. You know, you can't put houses where they're planning to put houses right now because of stream buffers and that. That would make, you know, a very significant difference. And... I think that's something that has to be looked at before we can really move forward on this uh, myself. So anybody else have questions for Dave or? Okay, do you have other questions? Go ahead. Well, I, it just strikes me that um, with that stream, you know, that water flowing through there and, and all the, uh, the buffers and so forth, is this potentially an OSC kind of a Candidate, yeah, you know, that would you be restructure a, it. Uh, well, we don't have our OSC expert here. I don't know if Jason's prepared to talk to OSC. Well, I mean, it's it's got, or not, but, but it's got some some space there that uh, you just can't build on. It, 
It may yeah. be. I it mean, and that may be possible to me that like they could look at. To be thinking about that. They could look at an R15 OSC, right? You know, or, or an R12. You know, so yeah. they they have some options to look at that. I certainly think we need the lots to be more in that 12,000 square foot right. range rather than 8,000, uh, given everything that's around this property. <coughs> uh, and that so. Well, if they, went, if they went to OSC, you know, there's no bottom limit on the size. Yeah, but, but, you but as you know, a minimum 10, or you something. know, we make, yeah. we make the, uh, the determination as we look at them and review them then. So it's not a set and set there. And that's not to say that we, you know, on an OSC, you know, if they came forward with a good plan that was a little less than 12,000, maybe, but, but, you know, I think. You know, kind of looking at it in my mind right now, I'm thinking, you know, that R12, 12,000 square foot, you know, kind of lots makes it's a better fit for this for this area. Uh, and that, so I think that's, you know, one of the things. Anybody else have any other comments? Or It really doesn't appear to me that we can delete this to R12. Because you, you have so many other things you're going to have to consider. This stream buffer area, you talked right. about buffers and setbacks and, you know, 20 feet between, yeah. and we can't do that for No, me. no, so I think we hearing need and to holding do. is probably yeah. a better way to go. Yeah, that's what I think we need yeah. to do. I think they need to get with Frank and Frank determine if this is going to be a buffer area. Because right. if it is, yeah. they'll have to revise the site plan. <clears throat> if it's yeah. not, they still might have to make some changes. But at yeah. this point, even Dave doesn't know where it's at. Uh, right, and, that's, and I would, I would agree with that. So I think, you know, with that, sounds like everybody's on board with a yep. hold. I'll make a motion in a second, but, but, you know, just some guidance. You know, I get with, with uh, Frank Gibson from Stormwater Management to find out if that's a state water or not going through the property because that will impact it. You know, define any floodplains, any buffers, things like that. Uh, you know, an R12 plan or maybe an R15 OSC plan, uh, align Ridgefield Drive with the Bremley Cove Drive, you know, provide for some significant screening uh, on Hills Hillcrest Drive so that we're not looking at the backyards of, of people's houses that tend to get very messy. Uh, that's something fairly standard. Since this is an up elevation, we often do a uh, berm with heavy landscaping on top of it. Uh, that's something that, that we should look at. We'd want an HOA to be responsible for maintenance of, of that landscaping and, and that. Uh, I'd like to see elevations for homes with a minimum of 2,000 square feet with, with garages and uh, Two-car garages and corresponding driveways. Uh, front elevations, you know, 50 percent brick or stacked stone, with the remaining being, you know, some type <laughs> of cement-based uh, product. You know, the and that and uh, yeah, provision for a homeowners association and and hopefully a stipulation letter that goes through all the details the stuff that we standardly get uh, on these. So, and, and any plan you bring, we'd like to see lot sizes on it so that we can look at average lot size and things like that. So with that said, I'm going to make a motion that we hold this till our February hearings. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Um, no other further discussion. Call for the vote. You said that passes 5-0. So we're going to hold this one and hear it. Pushing this one to February, eh? <laughs> Another one. Okay. February is going to be interesting. Thank you, folks. I'm going to be on vacation in February. <laughs>